question. Question is, serious, how serious is government taking the event sector? First point. Second to that is maybe give some insight in the, into the work that's been done around that. Questions come from, uh, from Port Elizabeth specifically. Um, Andrew Benning from uh, Inca Yezi Events. Yep. Maybe you, the two of you can split that question there. Okay, so um, can I start, Sharif? Please, because if I say <laughs> that, <laughs> that's going to be scary. That's why I went to Kevin first and then to Sharif to finish off, to close off as such. Um, so actually, I think the government uh, is very understanding of, of the state of the events industry, uh, but th they're also very concerned. And Mike spoke about the risk levels that we face in the industry. And I think that uh, uh, government has up until now taken a very conservative approach. Um, but I think that they are at a stage where they ca have come to realize that uh, if they continue to take as conservative an approach as they have done up until now, the economy will simply grind to a halt. Uh, so if we look at our industry and break it up uh, in the short term, there's an element of relief that is needed to support people that have been adversely affected by the shutdown. Uh, there's an element of maintenance that needs to be done to ensure that there is an industry that can kickstart uh, itself at some later point in time. Um, and then there's uh, an element that I'm calling renewal. Uh, there's no point in, in keeping an industry ticking along unless at some point in the future we, uh, we have the opportunity to metamorphosize into something new. Um, and so I, I think uh, certainly, you know, I've spent a lot of time dealing with the Department of Labor. Uh, I know you've spent a lot of time working with the Department of Tourism, uh, spent a lot of time having conversations with the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. Uh, we've submitted our reopening guidelines to the Department of Health. In most instances, uh, you know, our, our proposals have been well received. I have to say, uh, with apologies to the people that I've been working with at the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, that they've been perhaps more reticent than other government departments to engage with us. Um, but I am hopeful that, that we, we have opened up the door and, uh, and, and we'll be able to work with them. Part of the challenge, I think, when we talk about events is that they cover so many different facets. So, uh, you know, from a Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, it would, it would revolve around the audience at a live sporting event uh, or a, a music conference, a, a music uh, performance. Uh, but actually, you know, we, there are other conferences that focus on um, the business environment. And under those circumstances, the DTI would need to be involved. Uh, so it's not that there's one government department. It's, it's that we're trying to engage with many government departments uh, to reopen the industry. Sharif, and before you start, Sharif, you only have two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin has been very kind. <laughs> He's been very kind. Yeah, look, uh, we were the uh, uh, first out, and, and, uh, and as far as government is concerned, we're going to be the last back in. Uh, and it's up to us as industry to prove them wrong. I understand that uh, they need to keep... Uh, the gathering act in place and keep us all separated and 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 obviously it's for our well-being and the health of our country so that we don't uh, pass on virus from one to the other but we have proven with today that we c are capable and responsible enough uh, to take it further. Uh, from a business perspective, putting 50 people in a room does not pay the bills. Uh, we need to increase it up to a minimum of 300 to have a conference, to have a, an awards uh, evening with the protocols that are there. And government has <laughs> neglected to engage with us, uh, to take our experience into consideration. Um, we have on numerous occasions reached out to say, we can do this and we can do that and we can prove this and we can prove that. And make no mistake, our prime objective is health and safety. That is the prime objective of any event, of any person. Uh, uh, but to date, I, I personally feel government has not engaged enough with us. And it's something like this that will hopefully open the doors to move forward. Glenton, I, I want to take yeah. the opportunity. I think FaceTime is critical for us right now. Mm. We've engaged around the fringes. We need to meet directly with the Minister of Tourism. What the, what the Tourism Co Business Council has done up to now, which SARC has been instrumental in, in doing, has been great. But we as an industry, events industry, need to sit in front. The, 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 the Minister of Sport and his DGs 
and, and, and deputy DGs need to meet with us. They need to understand the difference between an event, a football game, a rugby game, a golf event, Absolutely. whatever it might be. And, and those are critical. We need the Department of Health to come back to us and tell us what do they want to see changed in the guidelines so that we can get them gazetted. The Department of Labor is ready. They understood and, and feel that we've met all their requirements as per the directions. So now it's face time. You know, we, we, that, you know, we have to engage on those structures. And, and we've put our hands up to the National Disaster Management Center. We'll do the same with the National um, Coronavirus Command Center and the head of National Commission of Police. We're here to talk. We had to work together. And, and we want that time. And we want that engagement. Okay. So I'm going to get... Are we